Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Welcome to another episode of the True Islam live show, a show where we discuss various allegations and made by organizations and people against Islam, and we refute them to give you the answers that you need. Tonight I'm joined with some faces that you may not have seen before and you may have seen before. Imam Mustafa, welcome again. Thanks and Imam Zishan, welcome to the show. Thank you. So the show, as some of you may know already, is broken into two segments. The first segment, we look at some videos that people have made or an organization has made against Islam. And then the second part of the show is based around yourself, the audience, sending us questions so that we can answer them live for you. So this particular episode today is uh, talking, we're talking about something that is contentious within the Muslim world, but it really shouldn't be. Um, and it's the death of uh, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And we look at some views of what Sunni scholars say and how easily they can be refuted. And it's apparent with the video clip that we're going to see today. So without further ado, let's take a look at the, at the clip and see what we are talking about today. Quran teaches Jesus died. Yes. Where? Surah, Surah Ali Imran, Surah 55. Yeah, yeah, okay. You want me to read the verse? What, 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 what does it say? It says, here, I'll read the Arabic. It says, yeah. all right, it's, let me pull it up real quick. Give me one second. Yeah, good, good. Read, read. All right, it says, the word is mitawafika. I just want to let you know that. All right. No, you know what the word is. What is it? Is it? Uh, it says, 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 Yeah, yes. So some Muslims say that this, 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 that, no, that this stop, word does not mean that. Stop, stop. Yeah. Get some Muslims. Mention in some Muslims. I want to hear your argument. So you read the verse. Okay. How did you understand the, how did you understand the verse? Well, well, first, I, me, my knowledge, my layman knowledge of mutawafika. Mutawafika comes from the word mimituka yeah, and comes from the word tawafa. Let, let me deal with this. Let me deal with this. Okay, uh, Sheikh. You have the Quran, yes, correct? Yeah, I have the Quran in front of me. Okay. Can you please open Surah Al An'am, verse number 60, please? Okay. What does that have to do with the, with the verse? Yeah, yeah just, just open Surah Al An'am, verse number 60, and then you will understand. So, uh, uh chapter what? Okay. Surah it's Surah 60 verse 6? Six? Six, six. Oh, chapter six. Yeah, chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse number 60. 60, all right, great, great. Thank you very much because you just proved my point. Yes, read it. You proved my point, thank you. Thank you, Sheikh, you just proved my point. Don't come yes, just, read it. just read it, read it. It, it says, it says, he who takes your souls by night. Yes, this this word, it says, it, this word, this word in here is tawafa. Yeah, right? so yeah, yeah, Sheikh, Sheikh. You know the word tawafa only means night or sleep when the word night or sleep is used alongside the word tawafa, right? And that is not applied in Surah 3, verse 55. So you just no, been refuted. Not, yeah, yeah, you just got not. refuted, bro. <laughs> the word the word the word tawafa only means night, only means sleep when night or sleep is alongside is used alongside the word tawafa. What one second? Who told you tawafa means night? No, no, I said no, I never said that. I never claimed that. I said the okay. it only tawafa means death, but it only means sleep or the no, taking no, of the soul. No, 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 let, no, no, let me no, let me explain. Please don't cut me off. Let me explain. It only no. means the taking of the soul when the word uh night or sleep is used alongside the word tawafa, and that is used in Surah 6 verse 60. That is not used in Surah 3 verse 55. And according to Ibn Abbas, the word tawafa uh mitawafika in this verse means mimituka, and that comes from the root word mot, which means death. So Ibn Abbas even refutes you. Perfect video clip there. Um just to contextualize it, it's uh it's a young Christian boy mm -hmm. who's refuting the Sunni scholars and challenging them actually. And it looks like he's using um, the theology behind it because it's the, this is the common um, the viewpoint on the word uh, that he's mentioned in the clip and on the death of Jesus. What, what's your sort of... This um, the viewpoint was taught to the world by the promised Messiah, peace be upon him. Who came to destroy this false conception of the idea, Christian influence idea? Let's be absolutely clear, clearly that Jesus, that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, is is the greatest prophet, uh, the seal of all the prophets, the, the the one for whom the entire universe was created, is uh, buried in the ground after living an average lifespan. But Jesus is up in the sky and is going to come back down, as the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him warned. When the Muslims have the, the their their savior, the savior of all of mankind. As having lived for 63 mere years, Jesus living, going to come down, going to see the victory of the world. Not only is it influenced by Christians, it's going to be a state by which the Christians can beat us and the exact same thing is happening. That now these people are getting to the point of saying, stop, 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 stop. Trying to shut him down and, and laughing. Even though he's a Christian, and I, I wouldn't expect a Christian to be able to read the Arabic of the Quran, 
properly but then but then well, there's arab christians so you know that they can speak arabic very well so you can definitely definitely but at any some point may argue against that yeah. even if you look at the, the principles of the academic discussion debate even like mm. anyone can make a mistake at anything yeah and so for the scholar and the muhammad taruna maybe his name on the top right to be laughing at him when he's misquoting the verse or misreading the verse and the the the, the scholar hamza sh- shouting at him to stop mm-hmm. and asking him where did you get this from who said this all kind of kind of uh, belies a sense of uncomfortableness on their part. Do you think I'm it caught sure him off guard? What the, definitely looks like that. And he was a, what, a Christian, not even a Muslim, and he sounds like he's not even a nano yet. It doesn't bode well for the for the presenters, but to get to the point itself, um, the verse that the, the, the Christian brother quoted here is uh, surah, from Surah Al-Imran, which is the third chapter of the Holy Quran, verse 56. The verse is a few, is, is over a two lines long the beginning bit the bit we're talking about here is where God says I seek refuge with Allah from Satan because <laughs> when Allah said to Jesus oh Jesus I will cause thee to die now I will cause thee to die is expressed in one word mutawafika, which comes from the root word tawafa comes 25 times in the Holy Quran explicitly clear in what it means every single time but somehow this as you said in the beginning this non-issue has become the crux of the split in the muslim ummah and it really shouldn't be um and so the question is what does this word the wafa really mean and as we mentioned in the intro what does the prophet Messiah say about it so i think the word the wafa is really central um central to this discussion um and it's important to note that this word hasn't been, only been used in this verse, it's been used in other verses as well, which we'll discuss uh, later on. Um, but let's look at the word Dawafa, let's try and understand uh, what it means. Because this is the entire, yeah. this is the entire yeah. issue. Because mm-hmm. this is the word he, he, he's trying to, you know, which he based his, his, his argument upon. Um, so Dawafa, right, as you know in Arabic, uh, is based on roots. And the root of Dawafa is Wafa, yeah. Um, and then from that root, um, you can convert that into verbs on different measures, right? Uh, and to simplify it, where the word tawaffa appears in the measure of tafa'ala, right? Um, and the, the belief or the, the assertion that tawaffa means uh, to cause to die, to die, um, is something which the founder of the Ahmadi Muslim community, Hajjimullah Muhammad, has clearly stated. Um, and he has based uh, many of his arguments to prove that Jesus died on uh, this word and his usage in the Holy Quran. Um, and he has issued a challenge, a challenge which um, has not, which, which those who uphold that Jesus is still alive and that this word means uh, that he was taken uh, to the heavens alive have not been able to respond to. To this day. Right, to, to this day, to this day. And as we saw in this video, right? Are still unable yeah, to. Yeah, are still unable to. Um, so, the Prophet Islam, he stated that if the word the wafa is used with Allah being uh, the fa'il, right, the one who's performing uh, the wafa, um, and man being the subject, the muf'ud in Arabic, uh, without any other contextual point, right, known as qarina in Arabic, then this word most certainly means death. Um, he further stated that no, it, if there is anyone that disagrees with this, then let them search throughout, you know, Arabic literature, the usage of this word in Arabic poetry, in classic literature, um, in the Quran and Hadith, firstly, where this word has been used uh, otherwise in this context. Um, so th- this was the challenge um, that the word certainly means uh, to cause to die, to wafa. Uh, and here it has been used in in the form mutawafika, which means I will cause you to die, but it's from the same root. Um, and it certainly means uh, death. But we see here in this video that non Ahmadis they often counter this argument um, by saying, oh, wait, but there's a verse in Surah Az Zumar, uh, and, uh, and there are other verses where this word has been used to mean uh, death. So, like, I think you can tell us a yeah. bit more about some of these verses. Absolutely. So, 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 just to recap, the, the challenge of the Prophet Society is based on four points: that the doer of the action has to be God, of the tawaffa action, 
the 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 subject, the one who it's being done to, has to be a human being, something with a spirit, yeah. human basically. It has to be the the verb form tawaffa. And the fourth condition is that it can't be have any other extenuating conditions to yeah. change it, no other contextual anything other point to change the meaning. Yeah. And perfect example of that, to just that's the prototype challenge, unanswered to this day. So if we look at the verses of the Holy Quran, it's 25 times mentioned in the Quran this this verb tawaffa. 23 times it means explicitly means death. As you said, when you know, like non MD scholars want to try and escape from this, this uh uh, this challenge of the Prophet Messiah, or basically what this basically death sentence for those who believe otherwise, right, is looking at the two verses where it doesn't doesn't mean death. But then when you look at those verses, the Prophet Messiah, the one of the four points he mentioned was that there should be no, nothing else making it yeah. explicitly clear or changing, making it clear that it can't mean death. And that's what exactly what applies on the two verses out of 25, mm. only two, where the wafa doesn't mean death. What do they say? They say, and he it is who takes your souls by night. I didn't mean to say what that means, what taking your souls by night means, because it's not here he took your soul by night in the past tense, because then it could be some one person died, happened to die, as some people do at night time. Mm. This is a blanket general statement that God is the one who takes our souls at night. And because no one's being accepted here, this clearly applies to everybody, but not everybody dies at night. What he it is who takes your souls by night, therefore clearly means is the fact that as the Muslims pray when they wake up in the morning, that um will praise belongs to Allah who has caused me to die and brought me back to life. It's a spiritual spiritual expressions, not not literal ones. Hmm. So the first verse where the wafa doesn't mean death clearly says by night, clearly being sleep. The second verse is even more explicit. God is here giving a dictionary definition. What does the wafa mean? God says in the Quran. Allah takes away the souls of human beings at the time of their death and of those who are not yet dead in their sleep. And then the, the souls who he wishes for them to die, he keeps them. And those that he wants for them to live, sends them back, i.e. when they wake up in the morning. God has there given two possibilities only for what the wafa means. Yeah. At their death or when they sleep. Mm. So, so I was looking at the translations from like non Ahmadis, and they're saying it means God takes him to Himself, because obviously that is used as as a way of this, of getting in the justification that Jesus has come back. Because if they accepted that it means death, then how can Jesus come back if he's died? Yeah, they say it means he took him. But even if it means take him, then if you look at other verses of the Holy Quran, that doesn't work as an argument because God elsewhere says in the Holy Quran, the angel of death will take you who has been entrusted with you. That's a non the translation. So yes, they've written, the angel of death will take you. But what do we think the angel of death taking you means? That's explicit. The angel of death will take you. He's the angel of death. Therefore, he's taking. when he takes you, you're going to come back. Mm. And another verse is, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَكَفِرْ عَنَا سَيِّئَاتِنَا وَتَوَفَّنَا عَمَالَ أَبْرَهُ O oh Lord, forgive our sins and remove from us our misdeeds. And cause us to die with the righteous. Taking us with the righteous wouldn't, it can't mean anything other than to die here. Because to be temporarily taken to come back to the earth with the righteous wouldn't make sense. Because when to, once you go with the righteous, you want to stay there. So, you know, hopefully this makes, this makes the whole context clear of the challenge. So does does the word then uh, does the word mutawafika mean that no one else will cause Jesus to die except for Allah? Of course, it says in me mutawafika with the with the. Uh, it's quite explicit. What's it? What's in me in Arabic? The the particle, the emphasis particle. Indeed. Yeah. So when God is saying in me mutawafika, indeed I will cause you to die. God's ex exclusively attributing the act to Himself and Himself only. So yeah. No. Certainly. And then follows that by saying that I'll fit okay, later. That's so, another discussion. Yeah, that, that's the whole other discussion. Yeah. Right? Which, like, you know, why would he say, firstly, I will bring you to myself? And then he'll follow that by saying, what I'll fit okay, later. And then I'll raise you. Right? No, absolutely. Yeah. I think just for just to contextualize this again, I think it'd be interesting to just because it's a short clip, it's not a very long clip. Yeah. So I think for viewers that have joined in again, let's, uh, I'd like 
for you guys to have a look and see what and the yeah, and after that, let's come back to the Rafael Rocker point. That's yeah, another yeah. huge misconception right next to it in the same verse. Yeah, no, like you said, it's it seems like this point has rattled them. It caught them off guard. Now we've opened up the <laughs> opened up. Let's have a look at the video with the uh, with what we've learned. Yeah, the, uh, the speaker's corner's tactics can't work. Right, let's on, see, let's when you when you can keep, keep watching the video again, that yeah. kind of stuff doesn't work. So yeah, let's let's have a look at the clip again, please. Quran teaches Jesus died. Yes. Where? So we're so we're Ali Imran, so we're fifty five. Yeah, yeah, okay. You want me to read the verse? What, 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 what does it say? It says, here, I'll read the Arabic. It says, read. all right, it's, let me pull it up real quick. Give me one second. Yeah, good, good. Read this. All right, it says, the word is mitawafika. I just want to let you know that. All right. No, you know what the, the word is. What is it? Uh, it says, it says, Qala Allahu Ya Isa, inni fika, inni mitawafika, wa rafa ilayki. Wa rafa ilayki. Yeah, yes. So some Muslims say that this, 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 that, no, that this stop, word does not mean that. Wait. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Get some Muslims. I'm interested in some Muslims. I want to hear your argument. So you read the verse. Okay. How did you understand the, how did you understand the verse? Well, well, first I me, my knowledge, my layman knowledge of Mutawafika. Mutawafika comes from the word mimituka yeah, and comes from the word tawafa. Let, Let me deal with this. Let me deal with this. Okay, uh, Sheikh. You have the Quran, yes, correct? Yeah, I have the Quran in front of me. Okay. Can you please open Surah Al An'am verse number sixty, please? Okay, what does that have to do with the with the verse? Yeah, yeah just, just no, open no, Surah Al An'am, verse number sixty, and then you will understand. So, uh, uh chapter what? Okay. Surah it's Surah sixty verse six. 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 Oh, chapter sorry. six. Yeah, chapter uh, chapter six, verse number sixty. Sixty. All right, great, great. Thank you very much because you just proved my point. Yes, read it. You proved my point. Thank you, thank you, Sheikh. You just proved my point. Don't come yes, just, read it. It. just read it. Read it. it. It says, it says, he who takes your souls by night. Yeah, this yeah, this word it says it, this word this word in here is tawaffa, yeah, right? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Sheikh, Sheikh. You know the word tawaffa only means night or sleep when the word night or sleep is used alongside the word tawaffa, right? And that is not applied in Surah Three, verse fifty-five. So you just no, been refuted. Not, yeah, yeah, you just not. got refuted, bro. <laughs> the word, the word, the word, the word tawaffa only means night, only means sleep when night or sleep is alongside is used alongside the word tawaffa. One, one second. Who told you tawaffa means night? No, no, I said, no, I never said that. I never claimed that. I said, though, okay. it only, Tawafa means death, but it only means sleep or the no, taking no, of the soul. No, 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 let, no, no, let me, no, let me explain. Please don't cut me off. Let me explain. It only no. means the taking of the soul when the word uh, night or sleep is used alongside the word Tawafa. And that is used in Surah 6 verse 60. That is not used in Surah 3 verse 55. And according to Ibn Abbas, the word Tawafa, Mithawafika uh, in this verse means Mimituka. And that comes from the root word Maut, which means death. So Ibn Abbas even refutes you. We've had a chance to really look at that clip again. I think there's, you know, there's some pertinent points that need to be discussed again, because we were initially talking about the sort of the definitions, what uh, Arabic uh, uh, linguistics and sort of grammar has to say about the word and its meaning in the Quran itself. The Quran is a Quran. It hasn't changed. So it's, de it's definitely down to the interpretation of it as well. So uh, Zish Imam Zishan, go on, please. Enlighten, enlighten us on some of the other points that they've uh, mentioned. It's, re it's really interesting. We see how when as soon as he starts presenting his argument right that you see how they're trying to distract him sort of throw him off because mm. um, they know what's coming right he says something that some people have said and he's like hey stop uh tell your opinion right and he's obviously he's not he's not just grabbed this out of nowhere he this is based on something it has some sort of basis in in, in islam in, in, in islamic scripture right he, he um, asked he asked him where did you get this from yeah. who said this <laughs> who yeah. said that, this? that sounds i hear uncertainty there yeah it right. doesn't matter who said it Mm, the point there. is if you know how to if you know how to review it, yeah. But that sounds like an ad hominem thing. When you start to start to try and look at the guy and not the point, yeah. Then it feels that, that you don't have the tactics, the right? I, I think it's, they mentioned as well the where um, he tried to refute it, and and the young boy he said, "You proved my point exactly." <laughs> and, you know <laughs> that he's saying, "Who told you that it means that in there?" Exactly. Yeah. So he he mentioned in the beginning. He said, "Mutawafika mm. right? Uh, which Arabic literally means that mutawafika literally means I will cause you to die. So use mumituka, which means mot meaning death, mumit meaning the one who causes death, right? Very clearly, no, no, no doubt on that. So he defines it in Arabic, but then they, you know, try and distract him. But then he comes back when he reads the verse and everything, right? Which he thinks that is 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 disproving his point of view. Yeah. Um, by saying, hey, look, dofa has been used in this sense, but he clearly says mutawafika. Mumituka. This is a statement of Ibn Abbas. Now, Ibn Abbas was a very a prominent companion of the Holy Prophet so, so. Uh, He was he's very well versed. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu himself he's prayed for good. Ibn Abbas anhu, and, he, and he said, Allahumma alimhu al-kitab wa fiqhihu fi al-din. Oh Allah, teach him the book and grant him 
an understanding uh, of religion, right? Mm. So he was an authority, and the people that he was referring to were people like Ibn Abbas, an authority, and this has appeared in a, in a, in, a, in 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 Sahih al Bukhari, mm-hmm. uh, in the book Kitab al Tafsir, an explanation of a verse which we're going to talk about, where the whole uh, where the same word has been used. So Ibn Abbas himself has interpreted this word to mean cause to die. Um, and then, of course, we have other Arabic dictionaries. Uh, for example, it says in um, uh, in Tajl Urus that Tawafahullah ida qabdaruha that you know if Allah Tawafahullah means that Allah took his his soul spirit caused him to die. Hmm. Um, and what's this interesting that we were discussing earlier is that the word Tawafa is used in another verse of the Holy Quran. Yep. Um, and then this verse has been defined, or the meaning of Tawafa in this verse has been used by the Holy Prophet with reference to this verse yeah. and he himself has defined what it means about himself, about himself. yeah so um, the, the, the verse in question um, is quite uh, it's actually a series of verses which uh, in which Jesus which are, and, and, I, and I won't read out the whole verses but the the gist is that Allah is saying to Jesus out of Mary that did you tell people to worship me, to take me and my mother uh, as gods, as uh, two gods beside Allah? And Allah will say, you know, holy are those subhanaka. Jesus, so, so Jesus, Jesus, Jesus will say that, how could I say that? I could never say that about which I had no right. And if I had said it, then uh, you would have surely have, have known it, right? And then... He himself says, I did not say except that which you told me to worship Allah and his Lord. And that is messenger. Allah and his messenger. Yes. So he's saying that I was a witness. So Jesus is saying to Allah in this in this conversation that I was a witness among uh, over my people. I was I could see what they were doing. Um, as long as, as as I was with them, so as long as I was until. on earth, until I was with them, right? I could see what they were doing when I when you know during his his ministry and, and when he was with his disciples. Um, kunta anta so here we have the same word. Jesus using the word tawafaytani, uh, referring to Allah, uh, causing tawaffa as it were yep. to himself, and and again. Um, the non Ahmadis will say that Falamata wa Fate and he means when you uh, raise me to yourself. But here's the problem with this. If Jesus is saying, Jesus says that when you cause me to die, then you were watching over them. Right? Yeah, going back to the original verse, yeah. now going back to the thing, which yeah. is Yeah. Yes. So when you when God says, when Allah said Oh Jesus, I will cause thee to die and will exalt thee or raise thee to myself. If the wafa means to take you know, Jesus, God physically took Jesus to himself, and the yeah. question is, what does what, what raising does that mean after yeah. that? Yeah. Why why mention ra- uh, raising yeah. after you know you've already mentioned it? Is it why two, say the same yeah, thing twice? Why say the same thing twice? Using two different words. Yeah. And we find as well in, in the verses which speak of uh, of the crucifixion of Jesus, where Allah says, yeah. Right? When the description of the crucifixion has already you know b- b- been given so why use the word uh, rafa again yep. and i think i think you know for, for us it makes a lot of sense right it's quite clear that you caused me to die uh, or mutawafika i call i will cause you to die and then i'll elevate you or elevate you in status because of course um in putting jesus on the cross and attempting to crucify jesus the aim and the purpose of uh, his his enemies, his opponents, was to prove that he is a false prophet. Mm. Um, but by saving him, Allah the Almighty, and, and by spreading his, his faith, his message, and causing his 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 followers to to flourish and, and spread all over the earth, Allah was elevating his status and proving to them that no, he was not a false prophet; he was a true prophet. Mm. Right. So this mm. is what is meant by Rafiuka. I will elevate you. Right, Allah is making this clear because this was so important to them. This was this was why they wanted to kill Jesus. Yeah. yeah. The question is, if it was a physical raising to the skies, what ends would what end would that achieve? That 
wasn't also was a mission also not assigned to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So this is this is like this is an exceptional, unique thing granted to Jesus and Jesus only. Mm. So why him? Because the Quran describes him as Rasul and Ilah Bani Israel, a, 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 a messenger to the children of Israel. That does not require or, or make any sense for a prophet with the, with that kind of a limited scope mission yeah. scope to go up to the sky and live for two thousand years and come down on the, you know on with his hands on two angels and to 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 kill the disbelievers and to to spread wealth and to become like the to become a king king of the world right the world is bigger than the twelve tribes definitely so. because then the twelve tribes are, and then on the other hand you have wama arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin God says to the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him we've sent you we have not sent you but as a mercy for the whole of mankind. Hmm. What are you practically saying about the mercy of mankind when, when suggesting that while he's in the ground buried like an ordinary human being, Jesus is up in the sky and is going to come back with this, you know, this, this awesome mission that doesn't actually well, killing killing the unbelievers? Since when was that the way of the way of the prophets? No, absolutely. Um, and we touched upon sort of obviously we've talked about the hadith. Uh, sorry, we've talked about the Holy Quran and what it says in various different ways. There's many verses that prove. The usage of the word dwafa and how it should be uh, used and how it should be understood in its meaning. Um, as Muslims, we also rely on hadith as well. So there must be something in the hadith that says, yeah, that, that, that corroborates anything. I think you mentioned. In, in fact, the Holy Prophet وسلم, peace was, uh, upon whom the Quran was revealed and who had the, the, the best understanding of the Holy Quran, uh, the most complete understanding um, of, of any person, quoted the exact same verse. Um, in regards to the conditions of his companions, so again we have a we have a narration narrated by Ibn Abbas again, mm -hmm. where the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes, addressed his people, um, and he said, "O oh, people, you will be gathered before Allah." Um, and then he mentioned his companions, right? That when all the people will be gathered, he said, "They will." I, I, I will. I, it's as if he's describing what will happen in the day of judgment. That some of my followers will be brought before uh, will be brought, and then the angels will drive them to the left side. The left mm. side being the the, the hellfire, mm. uh, and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will say, uh, "Usay habi, usay habi. These are my companions. Mm. Why are why are they going the left side? They're supposed to be you know in heaven. Mm. What what have they done?" Allah the Almighty will say. Uh, that you do not know what they've done after you. And here he's referring to the innovations that the, 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 some of the followers introduced and, and, and how they went astray. And you know, after the Holy Prophet, many of them uh, apostatized uh, and so on and so forth. So the Holy Prophet will then say, that when God says this to me and he tells me what my companions and after me. I will say, just as the righteous servant, that is Jesus, said, and he quotes the verse. He says, That when you cause me to die, um, or, or I was a witness over them until, uh, as long as I was with them, or until I was with them, and when you cause me to die, then you were watching over them. Right? I don't know what, what they've done. So he's used the exact same words, um, in the exact same form, the same verse, for himself, describing what will happen on the day of judgment, right? And this, this, this again supports the 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 the, the, uh, the contention or our belief that this sort of conversation, this exchange between Allah and Jesus, is taking place on the day of judgment, right? Because the Holy Prophet ﷺ is using the exact same words. Um, that's it. There's, there's, there's yeah. more to it. Exactly. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, when you cause me to die, I don't know, when he's asked, when God asks him, well, when he sees some of his people going to hell, then he asks why. Why is it like this? God will say, you don't know what they did after you. And then, then the Prophet will say, well, look God to God, when you cause me to die, then I don't know what they did. Jesus says the exact same thing in the Holy Quran when God asks him, why are people worshipping you and your mother? He was like, I only knew what they were doing as long as I was with them. But when you cause, when you, when the wafa, when you did the wafa to me, I don't know what they did anymore. And which obviously implies death because you don't know what happens on the world anymore because you, because you, because you left. You mentioned the, 
the Quran, another verse I really wanted to mention briefly, sure. is the verse that is um, also again in the third chapter of the Holy Quran. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِمَّا تَأُقُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ And Muhammad is only a messenger. Verily, all messengers have passed away before him. If he die or is killed, will you then turn back on your heels? As with all these words, there's always like a this, this difference on what is the what is the, the the key word here. I mean, the key word here is khalat, right? To pass away. Um, yeah, our ignorance or our deliberate deceit, only God knows better. Most, if we're not all non empties translate this. And they have to translate this as, they can't translate it as what it is, which is pass away, because then that would, of course, you know, ruin this, you know, the whole, their whole contention. So they say that it doesn't mean pass away, it means he, he's passed. Like when a traveler passes through a place, he's gone, it doesn't mean he's died. Right. Which is okay, that's, before you even get into the dictionaries, you have in Arabic dictionaries, khalam, hulan, and aymat. Passing, khala, someone, someone's passing, aymat, means he died. Without even going there, like without having to open a dictionary, if you keep reading the same verse. See, there's an explanation of what does khala mean. Verily all messengers, let's say, let's take that transition. All messengers have passed through before him. If he die or is killed, will you then turn back on your heels? There's an explanation of what passed away here means straight afterwards, where God says, on the basis of the fact that all messengers have passed away before him, therefore, if Muhammad, sort of peace, be peace be upon him, dies or is killed, will you then turn away? If Jesus was alive, this wouldn't make sense because we know one of them survived. So then, you know, if he can die, that's no that's no reassurance to us. That's because there's another one that happened to another one. But if God is here is using all messengers having passed away before, this verse was obviously at the time of the passing of the Prophet, peace be upon him. You know, when the when the companions, especially uh Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, was distraught at the passing of the Prophet and would not tolerate anyone suggesting that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had passed away. Then uh, the later, later, the first caliph of the of the of the Muslims, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, quoted this verse and, and said that because all messengers have passed away before him, if now, as he, as he had, Muhammad, peace be upon him, has passed away, will you then turn away? If there was Jesus alive, if Jesus was alive, the companions wouldn't, there wouldn't have been any reassurance because they would have said, well, Jesus is alive, so maybe the prophet is still alive. Obviously, once you believe that Jesus is alive, then when you mess around with the laws of nature, then you open like a can of worms, and you know any, anyone could be alive. Then, if and so that's why God says in the Holy Quran that you don't ever find a change in His practice, because when people start flying up to the sky and coming down again, you start opening the doors up to, to mythology and weird stories that don't have any kind of a link with science or reality. No, absolutely. I think you know it's important to um, understand. From these points that you, you yourself you've made and and the, the the Sunni gentlemen have made as well is at the end of the, was the Holy Prophet so peace be upon him told that you know he can't ascend to heaven is that that's a key question to of sort course, of follow yes, we find in the Quran as well that uh, they he, I thought it says people of Mecca they asked the Holy Prophet وسلم, to to bring them down a sign to show them uh, something a sign which they could see to go up to the heavens you know, and to come back and. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu replied saying, you know, I, I'm but a human, I'm only a human. Um, and, you know, I think you touched upon this, that if anyone was to be raised to the heavens and kept alive for 2,000 years, then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was surely deserving that status, yeah. right? Um, and this this falls into the whole, sorry, was, uh, no, no, please, please continue. Continue, yeah. So, I mean, and I think as a Muslim, you know, it's, it's if you really think about it, it's it's so unfair that Jesus, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Peace be upon him. Um, came, he, he performed his mission, then he died. But the, the, uh, Jesus Alayhi Salaam, um, who came before the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, is still alive and he's going to come, come back again in, in the latter days. And, you know, it's as if the Ummah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so in need that Allah was unable to raise someone from within the Ummah. Mm. So he has to go back, back to a yeah. previous dispensation, the previous Ummah, and bring a prophet from there to, to, to help the Muslims. Right? So, you know, I think for every Muslim, there's a lot of, you know, a lot to think about here. Yeah, you should ponder yeah. on those points yeah. and, you know, really consider that if, if it is, if that is the case, then, 
like you mentioned, is is the status of the Holy Prophet, you know, is it any less than uh, Prophet uh, Jesus and, and in that sense as well? Is so, there any other points you want? I was to? just going to remind just now, Rasul al Bani Israel, again, uh, Jesus described in the Quran as a, as a prophet to the children of Israel. The prophet, peace be upon him, warns in a hadith, there will come a time when my community, my the Muslims and the Jews will represent each other like two two shoes of one pair. Mm. When the Muslims themselves are waiting for their savior, who is ex explicitly defined in the Quran as a messenger to the children of Israel, if he's your savior, what does that make you? Mm. Exactly what the prophet forewarned, that most of my people will become exactly the same as the Jews. Yeah, I think I was I was talking to you about this before before the show as well. Where it's actually quite telling because um, in in a previous show I was sitting exactly where you're sitting. Mum Jangi was sitting over there, and we were talk. And his warning to the Sunnis was that please, you know, change the way that you view uh, the death of Jesus because you're opening yourself to attack, and you're opening yourself to attack from your own scripture, from the Holy Quran, okay. and which has all been explained over here. That's what happened today. And literally, it was a day after which you know we saw the clip online where it was a young Christian. Uh, who was attacking, you know, senior Sunni scholars, and uh, sort of had them perplexed. And it, it was, it was, it was. It should be worrying to anyone that sort of seen that objectively, and they should, you know, honestly and openly really start to look at what their understanding of the death of Jesus. And subsequently, then it should lead them to uh, the Messiah, his uh, and uh, Hazrat Mirza Abu Muhammad of of Guardian. May peace and uh, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. As well, so I think if we could just look at some of the claims that uh, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has. So we claim that you know the Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, has passed away and was buried in India. So again, this can catch some people off guard as well. Where is the evidence of this, and is there any indication of this in in any of the script scriptures that we've got, and or is this beliefs something? Is this a belief that MD is sort of plucked out of of of, of the air and it's just you know he was in India. <laughs> That's that's uh, India's a long way, long way away from uh, sort of Palestine. So how how does that sort of come about? Any one of you? I think you know, firstly, you know, talking about distance, you know, India is far closer than, than the heaven, right? So it's true. It's, it's really, you know, if you if you want to start exploring what happened to Jesus, what happened then, to Jesus you know, yeah. I think, um, and and there's a theory that he might have gone somewhere. Then let's focus on on the closer, you know, location. More realistic probably, option. Yeah, realistic option. Okay. Um, um, in fact, this isn't. You know something really new. Uh, the, this is this is the, there's a lot of uh, historical evidence that points to this. Um, there's a lot of narrations. Uh, there's a lot of, of, of evidence which we even find today, which yeah. shows that he was there. Um, that Jesus, after having uh, been crucified, he continued in his mission. Right. right. So as we mentioned, the Holy Quran says, "Warasul an ila bani Israel." He was sent to the twelve tribes of uh, the children of Israel. Now, only two of those tribes were residing in um, the area of, of, of Palestine yeah. right, at the time. So if Jesus was to continue his mission and uh, and to find those um, tribes, he had to go and seek them out. And succeed in his mission. And, and succeed in his mission. And, and we, we find in history that after the Jews were exiled mm. historically from, from the, the Holy Land, they migrated and these tribes spread all throughout uh, the east, with some, um, with some of them settling as far as uh, India. Uh, and so, there's no mention in scriptures yeah. or anything about. So well, back, back that the, up. Just check it, the Bible in, in Ezekiel. Jesus is the shepherd, thus identifying himself with the image of God as a shepherd searching for stray sheep in Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. And that's what this whole thing is. We have Israel now with the right of return. Every, the, the history of Jews, the Jews is one of the, the, the crux or one of the turning points was the exodus of the Jews. And the, and the Jewish diaspora is this whole idea that the Jews are scattered among the, the all over the world, and the idea of, of the Jewish homeland is, is the Jewish Jews coming back to what they see as as their land. And the fact that, like in in, in the Indian subcontinent, in Kashmir, for example, mm -hmm. despite most people being of there being like various shades of wheat brown kind of people of that area are are noted for having a very very fair skin tone. No, and they also have you know a lot of the cultural similarities between the people of Kashmir and um, um, there's been there, there's a lot of you know inscriptions and things which you find which point to the fact that the people who live here were from the tribes of Israel and to this day there are people who claim to be descendants of of the Israelites right so like this evidence was there but what we believe as, as Ahmadi Muslims is that when uh, Hazrat Muzaghalam Ahmad made his claim 
uh, after receiving divine revelation to be the Messiah, um, he had to conclusively prove to the world mm. that Jesus had passed away, uh, both through scriptural uh, proofs from the Quran, from the Hadith, um, from scripture of other religions, and also historically. Mm. Um, and this is what he done. We believe that the research he carried out um, was guided by Allah the Almighty. Um, and he compiled all of these, these proofs and these evidences. Um, and we can find them if, for readers who wish to study in detail. Uh, you can study the book Jesus in India by the Prophet Sallallahu in which he has uh, clearly um, established that Jesus uh, traveled to India where he mm -hmm. passed away at the age of 120. The, um, yes, definitely. Uh, I would definitely say um, the best exposition of this uh, this whole question is in the Prophet Sallallahu book Jesus in India. Mm. It literally documents his journey from Palestine uh, Jesus in India is in the title, yeah. Medical, Historical, Geographical Proofs of Courts of Various Scholars. Also, it's important to um, remember that in the Quran itself, of all places, we elevated, we gave them shelter, Jesus and his mother, into a garden, a garden of security and deep lying water, mm -hmm. which tells you this is a place away from Palestine because the Middle East is known for its arid nature. Yeah, so, so it doesn't reflect the geography or the geology of... And this is the Quran now. This is not even like, you know, some Lemidi scholar saying, when God says that he gave Jesus shelter and his mom, his mother shelter in a, in a, in a, in a, in a garden of, of deep water, mm -hmm. that's not the Middle East by any account, surely. No, of course. Okay. No, I think it's quite conclusive that there is... There is proof of that within scriptures, like you like you just mentioned, the Holy Quran itself as well, and history dictates to that as well. And you know, the mission of a prophet, you can't fail. So, you know, that 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 can be taken into context with this as well. So, I mean, if Jesus uh, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, if he passed away a natural death, then why did the the Prophet clearly state in many of his hadiths and his sayings that uh, Jesus, son of Mary, will descend again. So how does that sort of... It's a good question. Um, well, it's important to remember, first of all, that prophecies are very, very rarely to be taken literally. Right. Of okay. course. I mean, this is, again, we were talking about similarities with the Jews. Jews said to Jesus that um, you know, the person we were waiting for was, was supposed to be a king, a man of land and a man of power. Mm. And when they crucified him, mockingly put a crown of thorns on his head to 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 deride the fact that you you think you're a king here's your crown here's your crown yeah and they're making the, the, the same mistake is being made now when the mockery there you go when when the prophet peace be upon him says that the, the messiah who comes will spread wealth um who, who will break the cross and as we mentioned previous episode will kill the pigs and and will have all this bodily power and will destroy disbelief when you start seeing these things in worldly terms and start comparing the messiah in your mind to what you see the presidents of the world and start completely getting the wrong end of the stick. Mm. You end up with these literal comparisons. The prophecies are always spiritual. Why is he called Jesus, son of Mary, for the exact same reason that the fact that the Quran says that Allah says in the Quran, Holy Quran, that I will send to you a prophet as I sent to Pharaoh a prophet. Mm -hmm. And what happened with Jesus? What was his role? He came to the Jews who had been guided by God, but the Quran extensively documents the fact that because of repeated disobedience. And arrogance because they saw themselves as the chosen people of God and therefore no longer subject to 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 be righteous and to be humble. Mm -hmm. God eventually took away from them the blessing of prophethood. And when Jesus came, who was the the prophet of the Jews, they directly rejected him. And so, in the same way, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, the founder of this community, is called Jesus, son of Mary, because he is for the Muslims exactly what Jesus of Nazareth was for the Jews, someone to bring to spiritually fulfill prophecies that had begun to seem in a worldly way and to bring people back to the path of righteousness after they become arrogance because they'd like, they'd, they'd begun to see themselves as we are the greatest people who have walked the earth. So that dissension, what does it actually signify? So like I mentioned in the Hadith, in, 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 in the words of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, <laughs> itself, how, how can that be then understood? I think first it's important to note that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu didn't just speak of Jesus coming in the latter days. He also spoke of the Mahdi. Right? Okay. And then we also find mention of a, of a person of Persian origin. 
So that makes three people. Jesus, uh, the High Prophet Sallam spoke. I know three different. Yeah, three different yeah. people, right? If we, if we go okay. to the scriptures, we find three. So you either believe that you're going to have three people um, who, are, who are going to pay it, or um, you take the more rational approach, mm -hmm. which is to understand or to try and understand what the Holy Prophet وسلم, was trying to say. That by mentioning three different people, he was mentioning certain attributes of the person who's going to come right. to make it easier for us to recognize. Right, so we believe that the Jesus alayhi salam, uh, Isa ibn Maryam mentioned in the hadith, the Mahdi, and uh, the person, the man of Persian the origin, they're all one pointing to one person. Um, but what does descent mean? Um, if we establish that Jesus has died, that's 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 the important thing. Once can't you, contradict, yeah, you can't contradict, yeah. yeah. Once you once you establish that, then you start looking for okay, so Jesus has died. But the Prophet Sallallahu has said he's coming. And, and I think it's really important that we know that although this, the return of Jesus has only been mentioned in the hadith, these are very clear cut hadith, you know, which have been narrated over the centuries. And all the sort of traditional scholars, they, they agree that they're authentic hadith, whether or not they agree with us in the, in the meaning, but they agree that the hadith are very clear. And they've been mentioned, the Prophet spoke about this on many different occasions. Mm. So this is, you know, there's like, unanimously agreed upon amongst the Muslims. Um, so if the Holy Prophet died, then the coming of Jesus will, can only mean that someone will be raised among the Ummah, mm. um, just as people were raised before. Someone will be inspired by Allah the Almighty. Allah will um, grant them uh, the status of prophethood through following the Holy Prophet wasallam, right? Just as Jesus was granted a status, you know, following uh, Moses. Someone who will not bring any new sharia, any new law, who will be a subordinate of the Prophet وسلم, who will be from among the ummah of the Prophet وسلم, um, and he will be sent to to guide guide the Muslims, uh, bring them back to the yeah. right path. Um, and he will be Isa ibn Marim, as um, Brother Mustafa just explained in his uh, characteristics, in his, his, his mission uh, to reform the Muslims, just as Jesus reformed uh, the Jews. And he will be the Mahdi, the guided one, um, to, to defend uh, defend Islams and uh, defend Islam and to bring the Muslims out of uh, darkness. Um, and of course, the, the third person I mentioned, the person of Persian origin, mm. the Prophet said that when faith will be raised to the heavens, then a person from among the Persians will bring it back. So his mission will be to revive faith, right? And as we know, revival only happens from 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 within, right? Right? Yeah. So no, this is it's, so it has to be seen yeah. from a lens of you know. We, you have to accept that there's no contradictions. So once you start accepting that, then there's certain things that will lead you towards an answer, which is, okay, this is the only logical, because you can't have contradiction in Hadith and Quran. That's what makes it authentic, right? Yeah. Hadith. It is the, the, sorry, just the verse no, no, please. about that in uh, Surah Al-Muzammil, towards the end of the Quran. Just, that, I just wanted to point out, yes, yes. when we're sort of quoting verses for our audience, oh, yes, yes, some you. may uh, think, oh, that's not the verse that you're talking about. So our verses that when we're quoted are from the Ahmadiyya Muslim uh, community's Quran, and we count uh, Bismillah as a verse. So for some people, it might be the verse before. So I just wanted to point Thanks that out. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. So this, that would, it would be six, uh, chapter 73, verse 16, according to our measure, but um, Could be fifteen, according to yes, someone yes. else's. So just to watch. Sure. Out. Thank you for that. Inna arsalna ilaykum rasulan shahidan alaykum kama arsalna ila faraona rasula. God says, indeed, we have sent to you a prophet as a witness over you, as we sent a prophet to Pharaoh. What if so? So if the prophet, um, or clearly, obviously, the Muslims being addressed here. Inna arsalna ilaykum rasulan. We sent to you. A prophet, obviously, when it's you in the plural in the Quran, it's obviously referring to the Muslims. So when God says that we sent to you, O Muslims, a prophet, as we sent one to, to to Pharaoh, what's the immediate similarity there? Because the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was sent to people who were who were steeped in arrogance, the chiefs of Mecca, um, as 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 was the Pharaoh. And there's so many other similarities between the, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and peace Moses. Be. They both brought a new dispensation and teaching. They both brought scripture. There's another similarity, which is that they were both followed by messiahs who were spiritual fulfillments rejected by most of their people, but actually spiritually fulfilled prophecies that were ultimately taken as um, as literal ones and were persecuted by the very people they came to. 
So if mm-hmm. the if the similarity is being drawn between Moses and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, so explicitly here, you can't discount the fact that there's no reason the burden of proof would be on those who want to suggest that no, no, no. But when it comes to the Messiah, they're different. If they have a if they have a similar prophethood, it logically follows that the Messiahs they both follow should have that same similarity. No, absolutely. Um, I'm not, I just wanted to put another question across to you because it's it's a follow on from lots of points that have been made in this segment of the show and in the previous one we were answering was the the Sunni scholars and what they were saying and what the young Christian boy sort of said to them as well. So in, in the Quran, uh, if the Quran says that the, the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, did not know that what his people did after him. So if if, if the Quran is alluding to the fact that Jesus is going to ask or that these were after me, I, I don't know what they were doing. Doesn't this mean that the Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, won't return? And if he does return to the earth, he will not know what they did after him because he wasn't here. And especially if he's got to do fulfill all of the requirements of you know, killing the swine, or distributing wealth, breaking crosses. So all of these things that he has to do. So how, how does that sort of fall in? Well, clearly, according to their interpretation, it doesn't make any sense. Because if he's going to come back mm. and he's going to do all these things, he's obviously going to see the Christians, mm. right? I mean, can anyone today say that the Christians have gone astray? I mean, they've, they've done everything which is mentioned in the Holy Quran. I mean, 1,400 years ago now, you know, far, far worse, you know, exceeded all boundaries um, in, in, in sort of, also, moving away from their, their, their original teachings of, of Jesus. So if Jesus comes down, he's going to see this. Not only he's going to see this, he's going to, to sort of combat this and, and to um, bring them back. But well, we don't even need to look at that yeah. recent history. I think it all started to fall apart when Paul yeah. sort of yes. had his doctrine. Of and, you know, we mentioned that in previous, yeah. uh, the crux yeah. of the, the sort of um, Christianity's uh, um, teaching sort of started to get polluted with 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 the uh, with what Paul was then preaching to the people and the Christians at that time I took this I took this as a I might have misunderstood I took this as a point in support of what we were saying because yeah. if the if the question is if the Quran says that the prophet Jesus did not know what his people did after him does that mean he won't return well yes this because is if, if on the day of judgment he's saying he doesn't know that means he didn't know because he didn't come back he died before they started doing this the, the the Trinity, which he did because St. Paul came, you know, he started that uh, later, a bit later on. If if he's saying he don't that he didn't know, then yes, it doesn't mean he died because if he was here, then he would have known. Yes. I've had the spectacular the prophet, the question. Or, would, would not would never tell a lie, and especially to Allah the Almighty on the most important. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Sort of this stay station when you're being questioned on the day of judgment, you automatically tell the truth. Right, and and you, he clearly, explicitly states, "I had no no idea." Right. So, yes. Yeah, and then why would also support? Why would Jesus? Why would Allah mention this in the Holy Quran? Mm. Right. If it was not to um, show us that he has he has passed away. Yeah. None will speak in the day of judgment except those whom the gracious God has has given permission to, and they will say only what is true. Either I misunderstood this question, or this is this is this is exactly what the, the point is here. Him, 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 and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in the exact same words in a hadith, saying we don't know what happened afterwards, is evidence of the fact that human beings have a very limited lifespan. Once they pass away, they're not no longer responsible. That there are people who passed away. For them is what they earned. And for for you is what you earned. So they. Their uh, admission of the fact that we don't know is them saying that once we got you took us, we can't do anything anymore because we were just human beings and we had a very limited time on the earth. No, absolutely. I think you know there's there's a lot that's been spoken about today. There's a lot of um, I think there's a lot of questions for some of these uh, scholars to answer. They may say that we do answer, but you know I don't think didn't look any... like able, didn't look able to answer today. No, they look rattled. I, mean, I think that was that was the best way to sort of explain it to 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 the audience itself is the challenge is still out there of the promised Messiah peace be upon him, and there's a reason by after this many years no one's been able to rise to that challenge. So there, it's still there. Please, if you do have an answer to it, we're more we'd, we'd love to hear. We'd love to hear from anyone that has an answer to that, and I think that sort of brings us towards. A fitting end to to, to this sort of uh, this week's episode that the challenge is still out there, folks. So if you have something to say, 
you're open to um, uh, interpretation on the Quran. And it, a very young Christian was able to really destroy your whole viewpoint on everything. So if there's a time for this for this for this idea or doctrine of Jesus's return to be defended, it's now because yeah. otherwise the founder of the community who warned about Muslims suffering at the hands of Jesus because of this belief they took from them, mm. it's happening now. It's on Twitter. So it's getting, it's getting yeah. bad. Yeah, no, it's it's and like I said, um, the challenge is out there. So please engage with us on our different platforms. Uh, send in send us your questions that you have we'll aim to answer them uh, week on week if we don't answer them uh, during this week so um i would like to thank imam mustafa and thank you imam zishan thank you for your point so words good. and uh for 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 breaking the misconceptions down and really reiterating that challenge again and let's see if we have any other people or organizations that want to rise up to that challenge and we'll answer that no problem and thank you very much for tuning in to this week's uh, True Islam live show. We hope to see you again next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.